Hey y'all, Hot Cooper at LivingCooper.com. Today I got a coop simple how to for you. I'm going to show you guys how to apply force build texture to a sheet rock wall using the Easy Pro Texture spray gun and the Easy Pro Texture ready mix texture in a bag. I gotta say, I gotta thank the guys over at Easy Pro Texture. They are guys kind of sponsoring this video. Without them, it wouldn't be made possible. They sent me some of the materials and supplies for this project. They sent me the Easy Pro Texture gun and the Easy Pro Texture ready mix in a bag. And a compressor, California Air Tools Ultra Quiet Compressor, so that I can make this video for you guys. If you guys haven't seen my first video using the Easy Pro Texture, check that video out. I did a review doing the knockdown texture. And that review was done all on my own, had nothing to do with those guys. After I made that review and video, then they contacted me about doing an orange peel video for them. And so that's how we got to this video. So I'll come on in here a little closer and we're going to talk about the Easy Pro Texture Spray Gun as well as the Easy Pro Texture Ready Mix Texture in a bag and how to set this gun up and get ready to spray as well as the texture get ready to spray. So y'all come on in here and let's take a look. I really like this gun and that's, it's, it's great for the DIYers. So let's talk a little bit about this, some important things, I guess instructions, the instructions for using this thing and setting it up. As you can see, it's a pretty simple little setup. You put your airline in here and you'll attach your ready mix texture bag right here. So that, that's pretty straightforward. But some things to, to keep in mind here when you're using this thing is it's very important for the best results, I guess, that you take this take this gun, you take this gun, you don't put a, a texture bag on it, you hook it up to your air compressor, squeeze the trigger, and then set your regulated pressure. So for the orange peel texture, it's supposed to be 60 PSI. And for the knockdown texture, it's supposed to be 30 PSI. So it's very important that you do that. You set your pressures with the gun attached, airflow going, and no bag attached. That way you can make sure you get the, I guess, the optimal regulated pressure for this thing. Next thing is, it's very important after you use this thing to clean it out. And to clean it out, it's a simple task. You just take your little cup of water, you'll stick it right in there, and you'll see this when I use it. Squeeze the trigger, it'll suck the water through there, and, and clean it out. That's very important because you don't want to get any of your ready mix texture stuck in the, in the barrel of this gun. If you do, what could happen is it can cause the airflow that typically goes through to divert and go into the pouch of ready mix and then you know blow the pouch off or blow the pouch up and it can make for a bad day. That's after you're done. Now before you actually start spraying on a wall, it's very important when you attach the pouch, do not squeeze the pouch. You will always want to squeeze the, the trigger first, get the airflow through, and then start squeezing your pouch. If you squeeze your pouch first and then you squeeze the trigger, you're gonna get a big old glob that comes shooting out of here and it's gonna it's gonna be a mess and you're not gonna appreciate that. So always make sure that you squeeze the trigger first and then squeeze the pouch. Another thing is make sure that you start it on say a piece of cardboard or paper, or newspaper or something before you hit the wall. That way if there's a glob in here, it doesn't get all over your wall and the texture starts coming out the way it's supposed to. Also sometimes moisture can accumulate on the top of these bags and it'll get the, I guess, moisture somewhat out of there. You still want it to be wet, obviously, because it's texture, it's still gotta be a little bit wet to spray. Any excess moisture, I guess, liquid, you can get out of there, you spray it on a piece of cardboard first. So you'll wanna do that anytime you attach a new pouch, or even if you don't even use a whole pouch, you'll wanna do that. That's pretty much the gun in a nutshell. I mean, it's fairly simple and straightforward, but those are some important things to, to remember. Now, out of one of these pouches, they say that you can get about 30 feet of coverage when you're doing an orange peel, that's not a knockdown. But even with orange peel, it's gonna it's gonna vary depending on how how hard you squeeze this bag. And there's a little bit of a learning curve. You'll find that out. But it's well worth it for the DIYer, in my opinion. For my wall, the wall that I'm doing here behind me is approximately 74 square feet. So I'm gonna need probably three of these bags. Really, I guess like two and a half. But I'm gonna call it three, and we'll see. Well, it just depends on when I start spraying, how I like it. If I want it to be a little thicker, I'll make it a little thicker. Now they also say that these bags can be stored up to a year. So if you don't use a whole bag, you can put the cap on. So make sure you save your cap whenever you get ready to use this. And then you can put the cap back on if you don't use the whole thing and store it. I would probably, if I was gonna store it, I would store it in like a cool place. I don't know that I would store it in a hot garage. If you store it in a hot garage, you know, the, the moisture is gonna have a tendency to evaporate out of the out of the texture that's left in the bag and kind of accumulate up the top. And, and it'll also, you know, that'll kind of 
cause it to harden up. I think the best thing to do if you're going to wind up storing this thing is to store it in a, in a drawer or a closet in a conditioned space, not necessarily out in the hot garage. I think that's about enough of the instruction part. Let's go ahead and hook our gun up to our compressor and set the pressures on our compressor. Now to hook this gun up to the compressor, it's straightforward. You just take this, is just a coil hose. You can use pretty much any kind of air hose. Plug it in. Plug that thing in just like that. On this particular air compressor, the regulated pressure is here and the tank pressure is here. And this is the pressure regulator. So right now I have the pressure, it's up to about 100 PSI. So we're gonna back this down. We want to back it down. There you go, we got our pressure set to 60 PSI. And if you saw my knockdown video, my review of this Easy Pro Texture Gun, you'll know that one of the things I said I really liked about it is that when I was looking for a hopper to do my knockdown texture or a spray gun, most of them needed a, well, pretty much all of them needed a bigger compressor than the Easy Pro Texture. This Easy Pro Texture Gun basically just takes a standard compressor that most people have. Most of those hopper guns and stuff that I looked at, they needed like a 7 CFM compressor, which is pretty good sized compressor and pretty expensive. But the Easy Pro Texture was really nice because you can use a, a you know a small regular compressor like this to operate it. All right, let's, let's see if we can spray this wall. All right, before we attach our bag of ready mix texture to our spray gun, we need to kind of shake it and eat it and mix it for about 20 seconds or so. Just make sure we get Everything, I guess, better distributed as far as if any moisture and evaporated out of the mixture itself. So there's our mixture, about 30 seconds. Now we'll attach it. To attach it, you'll just twist the cap right off, just like that, and you're gonna, gonna wanna hang onto that cap. And then you'll take your gun and you'll stick it right in there. And you'll go to the second kind of little notch on the, and it's pretty tight to get on there. There we go, the second little notch on the connector there. They say that way it's easier to pull that thing off when you're done. Do not squeeze the bag. You want to squeeze the trigger first. Always trigger first, right? Trigger first before you squeeze the bag. You're going to go in small circular motions like this. And it didn't really say how far away you need to be from the wall. So I'm probably going to do about 12 inches. I guess it just depends on the coverage you want on this thing uh, as to how far the blade will be. So you're just going to have to play with it to see what coverage you get. As far as drag time on this stuff, I think it takes anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes, supposedly. I'm sure that also depends on humidity, the area that you're in, things like that. Once it's dried, then you can paint it. All right, so let's come over here. I'm gonna start back in this corner. And always, you wanna start off on a piece of cardboard. So I got a piece of cardboard there, especially when you have a new bag because it's, the bag is full and so it's automatically just gonna suck stuff up. And so you kinda of wanna start on a piece of cardboard so in case there's any globs or anything that comes out, you kinda of get that out of the way first. You also want to have a little cup of water. I got a little cup of water here, standing by. That's all you need to clean this thing. So once you finish the bag, when I did the knockdown texture, I pretty much cleaned it between bags. You don't necessarily have to do that, I don't think, because it shouldn't dry in that amount of time, but I, I just prefer to do that. So whenever you take this bag off, you just kind of dip the little connector nozzle into the water, give it a little, couple little squirts, pull the trigger a couple times, and it'll clean that right out, then connect the next bag, and then move forward. All right, let's see if we can get this done. Here we go. Squeeze the trigger first before you squeeze the bag. Start on a piece of cardboard, just like this. Spray first before you squeeze the bag. So. See how some came out? So you're going to go in small circles. I don't know if you can tell, but to me, it makes a little sense to kind of start rolling this up at the bottom. That way you can kind of get the most out of it, I think. Maybe it's just me. All right, y'all, so I got about 24 square feet out of this one pouch right here. And you'll just pull it off. And it's kind of hard to get off there. You kind of got to work it pretty good. So I pull that one off, kind of throw that in the trash. Now I just got my little cup of water, so I just stick it in there. I want to spray it like up against a car or something like that, or out away from your wall, wherever. Now it's cleaned out, so you don't have to worry about any back pressure getting built up in there. And then now we can hook up another pouch and, and go another round. Like I said, I got about 24 feet off of that one. Let me finish spraying this wall, and then we'll take a look at it. There you have it. Orange peel, got it sprayed on. I'm going to bring you in here and, and give you kind of a close-up of what it looks like wet before it all dries. And then we'll let it dry, and then I'm going to decide, I'll get Nan out here, and we're going to decide whether this is enough, or if we want to put another coat on here and make it a little heavier. This was 74, about 
square feet, and I did use three bags on this. So let's take a look at it close up, and then we'll look at it again when it's dry. So we'll see what this looks like when it's dry. I'm not sure how well you guys can see that if it's focusing very well. This is wet with no paint, no primer, or anything else on it. That's what it looks like. All right, we'll let this dry now. I'll come back and we'll look at it dry. Should take about 30 to 60 minutes is what they say, so we'll see. Okay, all the walls finally dry, and actually it took several hours. I didn't think it was that humid out here, but maybe it is. I've had an air conditioner running in here and a fan running, and maybe I just put it on a little thicker than I thought in some areas. So let's take a look at the wall where it's dry now. So here you go, here's the wall, all nice and dry. And after looking at it with Nana, I think we're gonna we're gonna stick with this. So y'all keep watching. I'm gonna paint it and then I'll show you what it looks like after it's painted. Now that we got the paint all dried on the wall and dried, let's take some close-ups and then we'll wrap this video up. So there you have it. I changed this wall from an knockdown texture to an orange orange peel texture in about a day and a half, two days. I haven't been filming. When you're filming, things take longer. But even still, it went pretty pretty quick, even though I was feeling it. I mean, it's a fairly simple how-to that I did, so hopefully it helps you out and for your project when you might be getting ready to texture a wall. But hopefully you learned something with this video, how to apply the orange field texture to a wall. This wall was about nine by eight, and I used three bags on it. And it took me about, to actually apply the texture, it took me maybe 10 to 15 minutes. To actually apply the paint, it took me about 10 minutes. So if you're starting on a drywall, uh, a, a fresh drywall, then you'll probably knock this project out in an hour, two hours. Okay, clean up, call it half a day. It's pretty simple. So there you have it. I uh, really appreciate you guys checking out my video. And I'd like to thank, once again, the guys over at Easy Pro Texture. They kind of sponsored this video, if you will. They supplied uh, materials and equipment and for me to, to, to make this video possible. And so I really appreciate those guys. Check them out over at easyprotexture.com. I'll put a link in the, in the description for those guys. Like I said, thanks for watching. And hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you liked the video. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you can give us a thumbs down too. Either way, it's fine with us. Just leave me a comment. Uh, tell me what I can do better in my videos, how I can make them better for you guys. And leave some comments. Maybe you've had experience with Easy Pro Texture or retexturing a wall in general. And some shortcuts, tips, tricks that you might know that you can share with our community, other folks watching this video. You might be able to read the comments and learn from, from your experience as well. So leave us some comments, some constructive criticisms, and it would be greatly appreciated by everybody that's watching this video, I'm sure. Check us out on our social media, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter at Living Cooper. And then check out our blog over at livingcooper.com. And last but certainly not least, please consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell so you're notified next time we upload a video. And then check out our other videos. We have lots of other videos, other types of videos, so check those out along the way. Thanks again, and we'll see you guys next time.